My name is Connor Evans. I'm an assistant professor at the Wellman Center for Photomedicine uh, at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, my other affiliations include uh, uh, being an affiliate faculty uh, of the biophysics program at, uh, at Harvard, uh, and I also am part of the Harvard Ludwig Center, uh, which is a new Ludwig Center devoted to uh, investigating the emergence of resistant, uh, resistance in cancer therapeutics. An ongoing research project in my team has been the development of a project we're calling a SMART bandage. And SMART actually stands for something. S-M-A-R-T stands for sensing, monitoring, and the release of therapeutics. The goal of this is the development of a platform technology that one can apply to a wound or to, t or, or to tissue, say even internally in the body. One can look at, the, at this bandage uh, it gives you an assessment of analytes in, this, in the tissue and also alerts you when there's a problem. Now, the neat part about having the bandage be all in one is that we can also embed and are working now to actually build this technology in on-demand drug release from the bandage itself. So one puts the bandage on, one monitors the wound status. If there's a problem, we can administer drugs directly from the bandage and then it stays on for continuous monitoring later. And that's the platform technology. As of the moment, uh, we've been very successful in developing a sensing technology in the bandage for the detection of oxygenation. And this is actually a very important problem in the areas of wound healing, burns, grafts, uh, compartment syndrome, uh, and, and, and chronic wounds like diabetic ulcers uh, and pressure ulcers. Oxygen is a key component of the healing process. We all need oxygen. Uh, to, to survive. If we stop breathing, we will pass out. If we don't get enough oxygen overall, we'll die. And the same thing is true for the tissues and cells uh, within our tissues. And clinicians have a very difficult time assessing how a wound is going to close, when it's going to close, and whether the therapies are working because we simply are unable to see what is all around us, which is molecular oxygen. So what my team has developed uh, is, uh, is a series of technologies that can be incorporated into a bandage. Right now, the bandage is actually liquid or spray-on, and we can apply it to the area. And the goal of this at the end of the day was to create something that was literally red light, green light, and that's what it does. If you place the bandage on the wound, and the, the wound is receiving good oxygen, the tissue is well oxygenated, it glows green. As the, as the wound, say, becomes complicated or loses oxygenation, the color of the bandage, specifically in the wound where you have the problem, changes from green to orange to red, kind of like a traffic light. And we do this uh, through, the through the creation, through the synthesis uh, of porphyrin molecules that are specifically created to detect oxygen. Now, porphyrin molecules are, are, are everywhere. They're, of course, they flood our body. They're, it's heme is a, is a porphyrin molecule. And in, we as chemists have become very apt in developing uh, and, and using uh, porphyrins uh, for a novel variety of novel sensing applications, pH, oxygen, uh, temperature, and so on and so forth. What my team has been working on and what the chemists of my team has specifically been focusing on uh, has been the synthesis of new porphyrins that can enable this bandage technology. So the porphyrin we sent out to design and, and, and now have recently just published in the journal Agavanta Chemie uh, is, a, is a new type of porphyrin that is so bright that you can actually see its emission with your bare eyes uh, at very low concentrations. A few nanograms in a bandage and it glows bright enough by eye to be able to see it. Porphyrins work to sense oxygen by actually changing their brightness uh, with relative to oxygenation. And it's a process known as phosphorescence quenching, which is actually pretty neat. Porphyrins are unique because if, especially metalloporphyrins, the kind that we make, if you give them a photon of energy, they end up going to an excited state, and they quickly change their configuration to a metastable state known as a triplet. And the triplets in these porphyrins last a very long time. So long, in fact, that when they emit out of that, the process is known as phosphorescence. This is very typical to your glow-in-the-dark watch. Maybe your kids have glow-in-the-dark pajamas. This is a phosphorescent process that gives rise to this long glow. Because the molecule is in this state for a long period of time, it can interact with its environment. And one thing that triplets, molecular triplets, love to do is interact with other molecular triplets. And the, 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 the most, uh, the largest concentration of molecular triplets uh, that we have uh, in our environment is oxygen. So what can happen is this excited molecule in its triplet state, before it phosphoresces, can actually interact, collide with oxygen, 
and it can give its energy to oxygen and not phosphorus. So the way it works is the more oxygen one has, the dimmer the phosphor is. The less oxygen there is, the brighter and brighter our porphyrin becomes. And this is perfect because at the end of the day, we don't want to, to tell a physician that there's a lot of oxygen. We want to be able to tell a physician that there's not enough oxygen. And so it works exactly the way we'd like it to. We've done a number of studies now where uh, we've looked in, in animal models at, uh, uh, at burns, at, at, at wound sites, uh, and it very, very nicely maps out uh, 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 the oxygenation uh, of, say, a, a, a tissue graft. And you can actually see that tissue graft uh, be, uh, integrating into the tissue over time, becoming vascularized, uh, and, and eventually see how it integrates into the tissue and now is healthy and oxygenated. That this bandage can actually be used to sense and monitor inflammation in tissues. In fact, inflammation that one may not be able to see with the bare eyes. And this is a pretty exciting application because infl inflammation and inflammatory response underlies wound healing, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, autoimmune diseases, and in cancer as well. And so this may be a very interesting research and clinical application where these bandages might find use that we didn't even anticipate when we began the project.